Welcome to the Family Movie Night Podcast, episode 14. Uh, my name is Nathan, and in honor of our movie today, uh, that is Encanto, available on Disney+. Plus. I don't have to tell you that, though, because if you got kids, I guarantee you've seen this movie, and someone in your house right now is saying, we don't talk about Bruno. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. The first thing I want to know from my uh, co-host here today, Donnie, if you could have any gift of any of the family mem- of the family Madrigal, what would your gift be? I'm going to be honest. It's, uh, it got to be Antonio's power. Uh, I like the ability. Oh. I would love the ability to talk to animals. Talking to animals. That's a, that is, that, oh, that's a killer one right there. Yeah. What's the first animal you would want to talk to? Um, well, I'm gonna be honest with you, probably be a spider. And here's why. Because I would just like to be able to know that they're there. Like, you know, like if they're in the corner or hiding somewhere, I'm like, hey, all spiders, where you at? Okay. You just let me know where you are. I won't hurt you. Family can stay here. Just don't hurt us. We yeah. good? You know, stuff like that. I love it. I love it. And then, of course, the villain of our podcast, uh, which I'll say this movie doesn't really have a villain. Maybe- I am toxic family members. Is what I, <laughs> I was going to say you're whatever the I don't know what it is, the Colombian cartel or whatever that oh, is gosh. that kills a, a boilo at oh, the beginning yeah. of the movie. I don't know who that is that comes in. Uh, but yeah. OK, so whatever. Sawyer, uh, Hewlett. I'm what- European expansionism. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, OK, Sawyer. Um, what gift would you like to steal? Uh, probably, I can't remember her name. Mirabelle's mom has the ability to heal people with yes. food. And, oh, Julieta. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that is just, that is a perfect gift, okay? I would, I would love that. Yes, they have, she makes those arepas con queso, which, mm, spot on, makes me hungry the whole movie, just wanting to know uh, what that is and what it tastes like. I, I will say, I've already got the recipe uh, I may be making them soon for my small group. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, but anyway, my p- power I would want to steal is 100% Isabella's uh, just because the, the so the ability, I, I don't really know what it is other than she makes flowers and can make all kinds of garden plants uh, and make them do whatever she needs them to do. That's a pretty bomb one. Or Mirabelle seems to have some kind of relationship with the ma- magical house that she can get it to do whatever, and no one else seems to be able to do that. It would be awesome if my house just obeyed my every command. That would I'm, be wonderful. I mean, until the house like decides to go the opposite direction, you're like, hey, can you close the door behind us? And it's like, nope. They're like, hey. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's why I don't want a smart house where Alexa can take over my home. Uh, I want a relationship with Casita, and we, yeah. <laughs> we, can talk, we can just talk things out if we're upset. So. That's fair, that's fair. Welcome to the Family Movie Night Podcast, where we want to help your family have better conversations around the content you consume. And like I said, if you've already got small kids uh, in the house, you probably have already consumed Encanto once, twice, 30 times at this point. So we want to help you have some better conversations around that. We're very disappointed that we do not get to have this conversation with uh, our normal co-host, Heidi. Uh, She is visiting some family and was unable to be a part of this. Uh, It's doubly disappointed because this movie takes place in Colombia and uh, Heidi is from Colombia. So she would have such a unique perspective on this movie. She gave me some thoughts that I'm going to share a little bit later in our episode today. Uh, But of course, we need to know what is it we do on this podcast, Donnie? Well, on this podcast, we encourage every family at Community Christian Church to have a monthly movie night to help you and your children build memories, start conversations that matter. And the goal of our family ministry is to help you to raise your children to love Jesus and his way of life above all other things. And we know that critical to that is for you to have a routine of regular times of connection and shared experiences that help you build stronger relationships. And movie nights are a great opportunity to do that because movies are not only an easy way to share laughter and joy and great music together, uh, but even stronger emotions like fear and sadness in a safe environment 
but they also give us a chance to talk about what matters most to us in a way that is meaningful and memorable with our children. And on this podcast, we don't only just want to recommend movies for you to watch on your monthly movie night, uh, but we also want to give you some ideas of meaningful conversations you could have with your children during or after the movie. And uh, we also want to remind you to like this video and uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. And uh, also, if you're a parent that calls Community Christian your home, we have a lot more helpful content over on our parent Facebook group. All you have to do is go to our uh, Community Christian Church Facebook page, uh, click on the tab that says Groups, and you'll find the Community Kids Parent tab. If you just click Join Group, uh, you'll get tons of regular updates about events for your family around our church, as well as articles and videos and content that will, uh, you know, they'll, it'll help encourage and inspire you uh, as a parent, as you raise your kids to love Jesus. We would love to see you over, over there. And as always, uh, we don't want this podcast to just add one more thing to your list of things you feel guilty as a parent for not doing. The goal really is to make it easier for you as a family to be together and to build memories and to have conversations that matter because we want to help you uh, raise your children to love Jesus and his way of life. And we believe this movie, Encanto, is a great way to do that. And part of the reason we want to talk about it is everybody I know uh, seems to be watching this with their kids. It's available on Disney+. Plus and, um, we just think it's a not only a fun movie, an emotional music movie uh, with great music, uh, but it has some really good conversations for you to have with your kids about family and accepting one another and seeing one another for who they are. But before we get to those themes, uh, Sawyer, why don't you just talk about what did you enjoy about Encanto? Oh, I enjoyed a lot about this movie. Um, uh, number one, just going to get the obvious answer out of the way. I love the music. Uh, Lin Manuel Miranda knocking it out of the park yet again. This is our second movie of his where he did at yeah. least the music, right? Yeah, yeah. And, in the uh, Heights. And, yep, and uh, and I, it is it is so good. Um, number two is uh, the animation. You know, Disney in like the last like seven years ish. I don't know when, whenever Frozen came out. Um, what they they've gotten into doing like their own version of three D animation rather than just letting Pixar do it. And I mean, it is just reaching a whole new level, not like very recently, not just with this movie, but like in this movie, like it is, the colors are so popping. It is beautiful. Um, but also I love the story. The story is so beautiful. Um, it's a story about family that uh, is not told all that often because it's a very nuanced story, if I'm being very honest. And, uh, and I love that. Well, and I'll say in particular uh, on the animation, I agree this animation is great. I think Disney animation in general is hit or miss on their ability. I think Frozen Frozen 2 is actually pretty good animation-wise. I think Frozen mm -hmm. 1 is pretty ugly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I am not a fan of Frozen 1 in any way. I think the music <laughs> is trash. I think Nor the, I. Yeah, I think the animation is pretty ugly. Uh, and It's been seven years, okay? Yeah, Frozen Anymore. 2 uh, music is worse. But animation is better. So uh, I would like to uh, say that um, I do not agree with these individuals <laughs> regarding the movie. I like both Frozen movies. I do prefer the second one. Okay. Just, just, just disclaimer. I just want to say Donnie's the only one who's not going to get angry people coming at him in the comments. So <laughs> congratulations, Donnie. Uh, but uh, I think this movie is beautiful. What it does, Tangled uh, may be one of the best looking of the animated Disney films. And this movie copies that in that they have this way that you can see the streams of light coming on the backdrop. Um, like the natural light. It's obviously not natural light, but it's made to imitate natural light. Absolutely beautiful. I agree. The music, uh, I'm. Uh, we talked about it, so I don't need to talk about how much I love Lin-Manuel Miranda. I love Moana's music. Sawyer and I were talking about before. I think this mo movie tops Moana um, in that all, nearly every song could be the best song. We'll get to the end what the best song might be in both of our, in all of our opinions. Um, but yeah, I love this movie. It's emotional. I did cry in this movie, so you can know that. Go ahead and chalk that up for our super fans on movies Nathan cried at. I think we've only had like two on the podcast uh, that I didn't cry at. Peanut Butter Falcon, I didn't say didn't cry at. So you can chalk that as one I did not cry. This one did cry. So That's funny because that I did cry in Peanut Butter Falcon. <laughs> but not in this movie. 
Not in this movie. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, there we go. Donnie, what did you like about Encanto, man? I mean, I think obviously, of course, the music. I I, I love the music. It. I love how it was so well crafted around each of the characters that they it made you care more about each of the details of them. Um, I love the story. The story was very um, all encompassing. It was able to gather so many different nuanced pieces of like whether it was culture, but also just the individuals and things like that. Um, the visual appeal of it is fantastic. I mean, everything about it just pops. It feels like something that you could watch over and over and over again. And my kids um, have watched it probably at least twice now. And now they sing the songs uh, repeatedly to the point where I've had lyrics printed out and they sing them. So that's okay. where we are. What's a line that you just hear in your, cause I've got one. What's a line that your kids are just singing all the time around the house? I know, I don't know the exact line, but certain, um, the pressure song, oh, under, yeah. like the surface pressure, that's definitely a song that's being sung. And of course the Bruno, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, we don't talk about Bruno. No, no. My kids are constant. I, my kids are walking around. They do the one uh, as Dolores, uh, the the quiet girl who can her power is to hear everything. On Bruno, she just part of. I associate him with the sound of falling sand. Tss, tss, tss. <laughs> that is going on in my house all the time. And then of course, when they do that, I have to go seven foot frame rats along his back when he calls you. Yeah, I'm constant. I mean, it's it's just that song is a banger, man. The whole I mean, way through. It's all encompassing. Like it's it's not like it's not just for the kids. It's it's so fun as a family. Like if y'all yes. start singing it together, I mean, you're more likely to end up in like, you know, like a, yes. a steady sing along with other people if you would do this in public. Well I'm actually I, curious. Can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. What do you guys think like of this movie like as an all ages movie? Like would you say this movie is gonna be great for teenagers as well as like uh, a six-year-old, or would you say there's kind of a drop-off at, as you get older? I think that this movie can reach all ages because I think there's so many different elements that do capture it all. Because I think the teenager and older, I think they can definitely relate to Maribel um, and her challenges of learning about herself and growing. I think um, the cool little powers in the songs, I think that appeals to like your elementary and middle school age. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think it's a an all ages movie. Yeah, I definitely think, I definitely think it is. I don't know that I would always said that way. Like I can't imagine when I was 17 that I would have gone to see a Disney sing along, but teenagers are weird these days, man. So <laughs> Teenagers are weird. So they, they probably wouldn't really enjoy this movie. And they'll probably walk around seeing it. I'll say this. Heidi uh, obviously loved the movie. Her kids have seen it. She said this is her 47th time watching it. And she texted us earlier <laughs> in, an article uh, from ScreenRant.com called Encanto Creators Explain How We Don't Talk About Bruno's Song Was Composed. Did you guys read that article? I thought it was fascinating. Um did you guys get a chance to read it? No, I, I read it, but I, I, I don't remember. I don't recall. <laughs> I did not think it was fascinating. I don't. I no, don't recall I didn't it. read it. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, no, no. It's really interesting. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, it's very cool to, to watch. If you've never heard any of like the demos from whatever Hamilton in the Heights, Moana and heard Lin-Manuel Miranda sing every character, it's that's just fun to watch anyway. But she obviously really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, we think this movie is great. I would agree. It's all ages. Um, and uh, before we get into the themes of this movie, as always, we want to hear from you. There is a link in the description to a form called What We're Missing, where you can tell us, is there a movie that we're missing that you think we need to be talking about? Or is there something in a past movie that we have discussed on here that we just missed? Something that you thought, oh man, I was sure they were going to talk about this theme or this idea from this movie that you want to talk about. Or maybe just something in general you want us to know or a question you want to ask us. We will talk about those in an upcoming episode. If you go to the link in the description, fill out that form and just let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, but obviously, let's now get into what are the conversations that we could be having uh, with our kids about this movie and um, the the general theme that we think is kind of the biggest theme in the whole movie is this idea of um, in a family, what is it that keeps us from really seeing a person for who they are? 
uh, right? That that this movie, this family is being torn apart by multiple things, right? Um, but but the fear in the movie is, in case you haven't seen, it, I'll let you know. This is about a magical family that every person kind of at, they don't really say what age, but at kind of your coming of age moment, right? So somewhere preteen, teen, coming of age. Every person is given a magical gift, but there is one character named Mirabelle who doesn't receive a gift. She doesn't get a magical gift. And there's a prophecy about her from one of the characters who their gift is the gift of prophecy uh, that she will tear the family apart. And in lots of ways, it's that prophecy itself that tears the family apart. And what tears the family apart is this inability to see people for who they are. And what we find out is Mirabelle at the end of the movie, what we see is her gift is that She's able to see every person for who they are. And there's a lot of things in this movie, and that's what we're kind of kind of break down here in our conversation today is there are lots of things that make it where we can't see a person for who they are. We just see them as whatever. So let's talk about one of the first things, which is obviously key to the plot here, which is sometimes a person's gifts and abilities and talents are what keep us from seeing them for who they are. And Donnie, you were kind of talking about this before we get on. So how do you see this movie kind of addressing that idea of like your gift, your strength actually becomes the thing that keeps people from seeing you for you? Yeah. Um, I think a good example of this, I mean, I'll use a example from the movie, like specifically um, Louisa um, and her strength. Um, a lot of times, like, of course this is physical strength, but um, in, in a lot of aspects is there are people that are really strong. And because of their strength, some people often don't allow them themselves, not even knowingly doing it, but they don't allow that person to show their weaknesses or show their vulnerabilities. And sometimes it creates a space where they don't feel like they have a safety space or a safe space to have a conversation about, hey, I'm struggling with this or I'm having difficulties with this. And I think it's it's very, very well depicted in the song that she sings because it's like, it, it encompasses that feeling of feeling like her gift while she loves to help people. And that's usually the case with people that have strength, whether it be physically or emotionally or spiritually or whatever it may be. They love helping people a lot of times, but they do feel the pressure of having to actually do it at all times and not feeling like they have someone that can support them when they feel the most vulnerable. Right. Well, and that the family should family should be a place. And I've said this to my kids. So the song that really her song, right? But what my girls called the strong girl song. So this, can we listen to the strong girl song? It's called <laughs> Surface Pressure, uh, which just feels like a club bop. Like from I mean, just as it doesn't feel like a musical song, just feels like something you would hear in a club. Uh, but like the lyrics in this song are obviously pressure, like a drip, drip, drip that'll never stop. Pressure that'll tip, tip, tip till you just go pop. But this is the part that's huge is every chorus, it changes. One is uh, give it to your sister, your sister's stronger, right? Give it to your sister, your sister's older. See if she can uh, hang on a little longer for stronger. See if uh, she can, uh, what is the one here is, give her all the heavy things we can't shoulder. And then the question she asks every time is who am I, if I can't run with the ball, who am I right? If I can't carry it all. Yeah. Cause it's, it, it makes it where she feels like it, she's defined by her gift, not by who she, who she is deeper than that. You know, right. it's like, like, okay, well what happens if my strength is gone and you can see it when she struggles with those moments where it's like, if I don't have this, Will people love me? Will people care about me? Will people want me around? Or will I just be just like everyone else? And it's like that fear of being going back into the collection of people and not standing out is also a fear there. Like that, that struggle with, I want this power, but I also would love to feel like people will love me for who I am. Yeah. If it do people love me for me or just what I can do, Sawyer, you said you you really felt something about the uh, Isabella character who her power is that basically her power is she's perfect, right? She never she she always looks perfect. She's always put together. She has this ability to make every flower and you know plant that is just gorgeous. It comes out perfect. Um, but what what was so resonant about her character and her arc for you? Yeah, and well, like so, like all of these characters are kind of like are seen through the eyes of Mirabelle and, and Isabel or Isabella, whatever her name is, 
is kind of like the um, the top of the mountain for Mirabelle, where like this is going to be the most difficult one like relationship that I have to deal with because it's her older sister who is kind of always viewed as the 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 golden child of their family, and uh, and she's like betrothed to this guy, and uh, it's funny like similarly to Louisa, she's kind of feeling the pressure of the mm-hmm. family uh, that especially their abuela is applying. And, uh, but what I, what I love about their moment together is it's all about Mirabelle helping Isabel see that you don't need to like that, like the best version of you is when you love your family and be yourself and stuff like that. And, uh, and kind of Mirabelle teaching Isabel to kind of learn how to, Hey, walk a tightrope instead of just like only ever thinking about the family because when you only ever think about the family, you're eventually going to fail them is the thing. And that's what I feel like, by the way, like this movie is kind of about is like, if, if you just commit all the way to one side, eventually that's going to fail you is the thing. And uh, if you don't have a a balance is the thing. And I, I just, I love that. Well, and I, I think Isabella's point is about like giving up the tightrope. Yes, exactly. Well, well, yeah, exactly. And like, cause she's very like, prim and proper and like like in her like room that's where all the powers are like at their most like vibrant and so her room is a big flower display and they're all perfectly like lined up and all the colors are very well organized and then like at the end of the scene she like kind of like lets it all go and she has this like rainbowy spotty dress on and stuff like that and she's dirty and she's covered in all kinds of mixed colors and stuff like that and like if if like the abuela had her way, she like at the end of the scene, abuela walks up and is like, what just happened? And like, you made a mess and stuff like that. And it's this really powerful moment where like, she is kind of like, no, 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 no. Now you're just seeing what's actually going on underneath is the thing. It's this really good moment of vulnerability that I love. That's what? interesting that you said that. Cause I was thinking when you said that I, it made me think of something is that the symmetry, for her yep. room is symmetry the entire time. And the second that like that balance switches to a little bit of asymmetrical, like when she creates that cactus, like, mm-hmm. and it's like, it's yep. so different. It's like, but like that asymmetry is what makes her so unique, even yep. more so. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's, and I think it's her thing is that she feels like she has to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Yep. Her thing, she feels like she has to do everything just the right way and she has to do what everyone expects of her because her character arc is that she's supposed to be marrying this man that she doesn't want to marry. But because mm-hmm. that's what's best for the family, she needs to marry this person. And what she learns is, and I love this once again, just Lynn Manuel's the best at writing songs that has has uh uh, has the character at the focus her song what else can i do the lyrics uh, in the bridge are what can you do when you are deeply madly truly in the moment right she's living always of i've got to apply these plans that are everything i've got i've got to live my life because at one point we learn bruno tells her uh that you're gonna have everything you've ever wanted mm-hmm. that your that your power is gonna grow and grow and grow and uh just like another movie so you know, i just watched the tragedy of macbeth Right, that's based on Macbeth as a play. The prophecy Macbeth receives at the beginning of that play is what drives him insane. That because he's told you're going to be this person, he feels like he has to do things that are counter to his nature in order to achieve those purposes. She feels the same way. Because then the second line on that is, what can you do when you know who you want to be is imperfect? That I am imperfect, that I've been trying to cover up and act like I'm something I'm not. I think Dolores goes through the same thing, right? Like her gift is that she can hear everything, right? But in order for her to hear everything, she has to be very quiet and not speak her mind, right? And she is in love with the man that Isabella is not in love with, but is kind of being arranged to be married to. And Dolores has to learn, I need to speak up and say, I'm in love with you, right? <laughs> that yeah. I, I want I want this. And I think that's part of it. So your gift can sometimes be a curse. And I said that to my girls at one point is, you know, all y'all are really talented. There's something about kids and Donnie, I don't know if your kids feel this too, where my girls are regularly walking around going, what's my talent? What's my talent? What's my thing that I'm good at? Because every TV show they watch is about some girl who's a singer or some girl who's an actress or some girl who's really good at making something. The character is never about them as a person. It's about what their talent or ability is. Mm -hmm. And my girls are obsessed with figuring out well, if I don't have a talent and one of my girls goes, I'm not very talented. And I'm like, 
but you're you're my daughter and I love you. I don't care if you like I don't care right now that you can't play guitar at six. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter that you don't have a thing. Do your kids do you feel some of that pressure with your kids feeling that? I don't they don't outwardly express it, but I definitely see them testing talents yeah. and trying to figure out what they're good at. Like, I mean, whether it's hey, I want to use this camera to be able to create recreate a story or something like that yeah or them writing or drawing and like i see their talents coming out but i don't think they've really grasped the idea of well is this the only thing i have because it's kind of interesting to watch them kind of like see that it's not a limitation as much as a figuring it out yeah and so that yeah but it's definitely a they're in the explorative phase of trying to figure out which things they're good at and what they like well, and I think what I said to my kids, I think this is where the conversation can come is you're good at a lot of things and God makes you right. Um, and I, we don't have time to get into this today, maybe in the lightning round. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, this movie, you could have a conversation about spiritual gifts, that there's yeah. a time at your life, right? Where, where when you choose to follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit gives you a spiritual gift, something that's meant to be used to build up the kingdom of God and build up your spiritual family, the church, right? Yeah. There's something there. But to say, you still are more valuable than just what you do. Yep. That you do a lot for our family, right? You do a lot of good things. I have one daughter that helps out around all the time. She's the oldest, you know, my oldest daughter. She does so much, but I regularly have to say to her, hey, you need to take a break. Mm -hmm. That it's okay for you to, you are more than what you do. We love you, not because you get your room clean. Not because you, not because you follow the rules perfectly, not because you do X, Y, we love you because of who you are. You're our yeah. daughter and we will love you no matter what. And that's a huge conversation to just be able to have with our kids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think you definitely can have that conversation of helping them understand that. Like, cause even when people receive a gift or have a gift and they identify it like a spiritual gift, sometimes I think people forget that just because it's a spiritual gift doesn't mean it can't become overwhelming at some time because there are people that have an ability to be in incredibly empathetic and sometimes it can be extremely overwhelming feeling everyone else's feelings and then they sometimes don't know how to take themselves away from it because i think the the thing a good example of that is just watching how jesus did certain things like because when jesus needed time he stepped away he yeah. stepped away he prayed and he took time for himself and it wasn't a selfish thing it was a restored it was a restorative rejuvenating thing and i think so often we feel like we have to push ourselves to like this limit beyond what we have in this and we don't we have to be able to give of ourselves and it's the idea like we we talk about with our kids all the time is that you know filling your cup up as it gets emptied as well because we often empty our cups so then by the time it's to help someone else we have no space or anything left to give yeah yeah it's about letting letting christ fill my cup up for the sake of pouring it into others. Exactly. Yeah, because I can't pour into others if I don't have anything. I think that's great, Donnie. And I think the thing you're getting at, which is a theme of the movie, we don't have a ton to get into, but I just want to add on to is we can over-identify with our gifts. And I see myself as I'm a leader, so that's all I am all the time. And yep. I, can never, I can never be the person who's vulnerable and weak and admit my mistakes. Or I'm the very empathetic person, so I can never say, hey, I can't help you right now. Because I'm a helper. That's what I do. Um, and if you, that is a strength you have, but if you over identify with it, then you just become your gift. And like in one of the songs is you are more than your gift and you mm -hmm. are more than your gift. Now, another thing that keeps people from being able to see who they are is kind of this and, and Heidi put it a good way. So I want to, I want to bring Heidi's thoughts in here and we can talk about it, but it really is this over reliance on the family, this idea of family over the individual. And it really is this, this balancing act. And so Heidi sent to me, um, when we, when I was saying that we had to make, uh, Sawyer, the villain of the podcast, she said, it seems like codependency might be the villain. So maybe Sawyer can be codependency, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but, um, right. There's this Abuela character who really kind of is, preaching to everybody including mirabelle who has had this prophecy that she's going to destroy the family she wants to kind of keep mirabelle invisible and in the background and like let's not talk about the fact that you don't do this obviously one of the songs called we don't talk about bruno because there's a character that they feel like also his gift is destroying the family so we don't talk about him and this idea that if you're the if you're the strong person, you just got to keep carrying stuff because the family needs it. It doesn't matter if you need a break. It doesn't matter if you want to be imperfect. It doesn't matter if you don't want to marry this person, Isabella. The family needs you to. And there's a balancing act of um, 
the individual is not necessarily more important than the family, but the family is not also more important than the individual. It's a balancing act. And because of what the family needs you to do or needs you to be, that can end up getting in the way. And Donnie, you brought up this idea that really sometimes family traditions can be one of those, those, those um, things that keep us from seeing other people. You want to talk about that for a moment, especially in context of this movie? Yeah. I mean, especially because, um, when you watch how the abuela like is, is dealing with everything, she's very all encompassed with the tradition of, you know, every person gets a gift at a certain period of time. They, you know, they go to this door, they grab the handle and then boom, you have your gift. And then you encounter the end of, you encounter Mirabelle who doesn't have this moment. And so rather than trying to help her embrace or understand it, the abuela is stuck in this tradition of, well, you don't have it. So I can't really let you be in the forefront of things. I need you to kind of put yourself in the back. And that's often what happens sometimes in families in different families. Like if you have a tradition and something changes about the tradition, you're so completely focused on the tradition that you miss the focus of the goal and you miss what you're supposed to be doing. And like a good example of that, like is thinking about how like the Pharisees like the Pharisees had intentions of following the traditions, but sometimes they miss the bigger point, you mm -hmm. know, and that's sometimes what happens is we can get so stuck in a tradition or a way of doing something that sometimes we miss an opportunity that is right in front of us because it doesn't line up with what we expect it should be. Well, and in particular with the Pharisees, right, they're so stuck on their traditions, they miss what God is actively doing through Jesus. Exactly. They miss what God is doing that is new and better because they're holding on to the traditions. And there's a way in which in our families of origins, and I, I just recently read a book where the person said that we have to allow our children to leave us so that we can learn who they are when they come back to us. That's so, that sometimes, and I think anyone who's grown up knows this of you leave kind of your family of origin, but sometimes when you come back, they, they still think of you like they did when you were seven or when you were eight. And they don't see you as a 30 year old man. They see you as a seven year old or an eight or the way that you were at that age. They haven't seen the, who you are as you've grown and you've changed. And this is how Heidi said it. She said, the movie is really about the expectations we place on people in our family of origin. It's about finding the right um, grip of control that we think holds things together. That Abuela thinks she's holding the family together by saying, this is your role. This is what you do. This is who you are. Everyone stay in their proper place, and that'll hold the family together. But as Mirabelle says at one point, you're the one that's destroying the family. It isn't these prophecies. It isn't Bruno. It isn't me. It's you holding so tight on your grip of control that you won't let go. And I think there's a conversation there to be had. Sawyer, what do you think about this whole conversation about families and expectations? Um, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's so perfectly exemplified near the end of the movie, because for one thing, I, I mean, just over the course of the movie, I built up this expectation one that Abuela didn't love Bruno. And then when they are reunited, Abuela is overjoyed to see him that, 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 that moment was awesome. I, I, and by awesome, I mean, I got choked up a little bit. Um, but, uh, no, um, so that moment, but then there's also the the kind of peeling back of the curtain with Abuela, um, seeing her perspective of the responsibility of raising her family and stuff like that. And uh, I, I just I love that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think. Well, and I think what you mentioned there about Abuela that's huge is she eventually has to realize and hope, luckily, she does by the end of the movie that the point of the gifts, that the gift of the candle, the gift of the magic was to was to save the family, was to yeah, bring the exactly. family together, mm -hmm. and that she's been missing that. She's been so overwhelmed by keeping the magic, the gift, everything kind of moving, that she forgot that the point of all of it was the family. And I see so much of that uh, in families where, as your kids get older, um, and many of us have experienced as families of origin, um, things like holidays and traditions um, you know, Jesus once said that man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. And sometimes we think the point of a family is to have someone to spend the holidays with. <laughs> you know, it's it's not that the holidays are an opportunity to be with your family. It becomes on the holidays. I, I have to have someone to be like, that's the point. The point of the family is that I don't be alone on the holidays or I don't miss out on getting to do this tradition we've always done. 
But the point of the tradition, the reason the family created the tradition, the, the reason the family has these holiday kind of expectations is because the it was about the family getting to be together, not making sure everyone ate the meal at, at, at a certain time on whatever Thanksgiving or whatever the thing is. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And oh, I yeah, because I think the the perfect example I think of is like how you have like, especially with like when I like with my great grandmother, great, great grandmother, I remember we would get around the table for certain meals and we'd have that meal. But what like you said, what she was doing was she loved cooking for her family and to bring them together. But then it was like then it just became a thing they did rather than the purpose of the thing they did. Yes. And that gets lost so quickly. It's like we like it'll get focused on, OK, all right. So just like grandma used to do, we get together, you bring a meal, you do this. And then it becomes this overwhelming feeling of responsibility and guilt if you can't do it. Well, and there's even things among families. I know this is true. And I've, I've seen this in in, in my family uh, as well, like, you know, extended family stuff that you have these extended family gatherings. And, you know, every year, so, so-and-so so brings the potato salad, but this year someone else did. And I get offended because Thanksgiving is about me bringing potato salad. <laughs> like, that wasn't the point of Thanksgiving, was that you got to bring the potato, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Like, those kind of little things become little bitternesses that end up tearing the family apart and they end up and, and you end up having these arguments about well you didn't come to this or you didn't do what was expected or you didn't this and the point of the family was not to prop up thanksgiving or to prop up mother's day or to prop up whatever the thing is mm -hmm. the point of the family was that we would be able to love and support one another and that we would be together no matter what but these little expectations these little traditions end up being the thing that tear the family apart. Exactly. So to be able to have a conversation with our kids that say, once again, you're more important to me than what you do. And you know what? I'm willing, and this is not even a conversation. This is just a posture as us as parents that as our kids get older, um, not when they're young, obviously we have to have expectations and standards on our kids to help them grow into people who can function in society. I don't mean that. But as your kids become adults, to be able to kind of say, hey, you matter more to me than 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 the tradition of what we do um and being able to say the family is about more than just that um and unfortunately we're getting towards the end of our time here so we also don't have time to talk about bruno but uh <laughs> bruno bruno is a key part of that right and kind of his um thoughts about the family and the family's thoughts about bruno and we mentioned this so really briefly does someone want to talk about this idea of how secrets because bruno kind of becomes the family secret that no one talks about and how um sometimes we keep secrets in families to try and keep the family together but it was the act of keeping a secret that actually tore the family apart does anyone have anything to add about that in, in this movie no that's enough. I think that's important. I said to my kids out of out of this movie um, that we don't have secrets from each other. Um, and there are obviously things I don't tell my kids every detail of everything because they're not old enough to understand it. But the idea of um, really, and you know, this is from addiction recovery community kind of stuff of secrets keep you sick. And that's true. I know of many families um, where something was kept secret because they thought if this comes out, it'll tear the family apart. Well, inevitably it comes out and it wasn't the thing that you kept secret that tore the family apart. What it was does for 20 years, you've been lying about this mm -hmm. and it's dishonesty and it's mistrust. And Bruno kind of fits in that of B Bruno had secrets. They had secrets about Bruno and it, and it tore the family apart. Yeah. Um, so, okay, real quick, let's get to the end. So anyway, we think this is a great movie to have conversation about that, about expectations in your family. And hey, you're more than what you do. And the idea of, I just want to see you. I want to love you. I want to know you. That it really is the job of a parent to be a student of our children, to know them and to see them and to let them know they're seen and loved for who they are, not just what they do and what we expect of them. But let's get to the lightning round here. I think for our lightning round, let's just briefly talk about... Um, songs or maybe lines from songs that just really stood out to you and you thought was 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 awesome sawyer you want you start us off favorite song yeah. favorite line from a song uh, i mean my favorite song is definitely what else can i do uh it's the isabel mirabel song um and it's not so much that i love the line as much as like i i, I hate having to describe it because it's what happens with the visuals over the course of the song in the movie you know it's it's one of these rare instances where because you're not, like, if you just listen to the music, you're not going to get everything. You've got to see what's going on and stuff like that. 
Because at the beginning of the song, the two are very much at odds. And over the course of the song, they come closer and they be, they bond and stuff like that. It's a really beautiful uh, part of the movie that I love. Um, I also do love the opener, uh, The Family Madrigal. Um, love that. Also, we haven't talked about this at all, but it's very important with the movie and I want to bring it up, is the vocal performances in this movie, not just in the songs, but in, in general, are great. Stephanie Beatriz as Mirabelle, but also specifically with singing, the the uh, the vocal artist that sings for Abuela is not the the uh, the 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 actress that just does the the lines of dialogue because the the vocal performer uh, for the music is the actress from In the Heights of uh, Abuela and so uh, I I thought that was cool but anyway yeah vocal performances are great in this movie so yeah great Donnie lightning round talk about songs that you love talk about stuff any other things you want to add about the movie um definitely like i said uh love the love the music um i think the best thing about that lin-manuel does a really good job with music is that while the songs fit perfectly with the the movie um they also stand independent and they can they can hold their ground outside of the context of the movie um and i love the we don't talk about bruno mainly because of the the cadence and the rhythms of it i love just things that you can like repeat and like it can become part of like the I guess the, the meme culture, so to speak, which is fun. Um, but surface pressure, like you said, it's, it definitely is a song that easily could be played on the radio. And I don't think anyone would think any different. Yeah. So I loved it. Yeah. I think it's great. I think, uh, I think what I love about Lin-Manuel Miranda so much is his specificity in the, in the songs and how, as you mentioned earlier, Sawyer, like you have to, uh, you have to know the characters to really get, you know, you have to you have to see the visuals sometimes, even to know. Like one of my favorite lines in the whole thing is in Surface Pressure, Louisa's song. Uh, it was just so unexpected. Is I feel berserk as a tightrope walker in a three ring circus under the surface. Was Hercules ever like, yo, I don't want to fight Cerberus? My, I, who's got a song with Cerberus in the middle? <laughs> Only Lin Manuel. <laughs> Only Lin Manuel. That's just such a great line. My gosh, the internal rhymes on top of them: diamonds and platinum. I find them. I flatten them. Like yep. man, just rhyme upon rhyme. So good, so good. We don't deserve this. You know, there's all those memes about uh, <laughs> about uh, the the Phil Collins soundtrack for Tarzan. It's like, hey, you don't have to go hard. This is just a it's just a Tarzan movie, and then he comes out with this great soundtrack. That's why I feel every time Lin Manuel, it's like, hey, man, it's a kids movie. You don't have to give us big pun level rhyme on rhyme on rhyme, <laughs> but he just does every time, and it's so good. Yeah. Um, I also think there's something really cool. I got to talk to my kids, and I mentioned it earlier, but stuff about spiritual gifts in this as well. Um, and being able to talk about um, that, you know, in your life, you're going to be given a gift that when you choose to follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit's going to empower you and that, you know, we're your family of origin, but one day the church will be your real family, your spiritual family. And I hope that you will lift up them and you will, you will get involved there in any way that you can. And uh, the final thing I wanted to mention was I love that the big emotional climax of the movie, that the song that is used there is a song that's in Spanish. And I don't even know what the song's about. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. I love yeah. that this movie is so unapologetically um, based in Colombia, and that once again, as we've said before, it uh, it allows people who English may be a second language for them uh, to just feel seen as well, right? To feel Agreed. seen and to feel heard, and that it's a reminder to me when I feel like I'm on the outside of like, man, I don't even know what they're saying in this thing, but I get it because the visuals are so powerful and the music is so powerful that I get to be reminded there are people, once again, who watch movies all the time and they feel like they're on the outside, and that my job as a Christ follower is to be looking for those who feel like they're on the outside and to be drawing them in. And I love that about this movie. Great. Because my kids said that it's like, they're just speaking in another language. How am I supposed to know? And I said, you know, there are a lot of kids who watch movies and they they really struggle to understand because English is not their first language. Yeah. And it's important for us to remember that. I just think that's powerful and it's important. Um, and this movie is a great way to do that. So we're going to wrap it up here. We're a little over our time uh, once again. But we thank you for sticking with us through the whole time. We hope you watch this. I hope you fill out the form below. Let us know you're watching. We want to know you're out there. And join us next week as we talk about another great movie on the Family Movie Night Podcast. <laughs>